Welcome back to Bargaining 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the risk-return trade-off. I cover it in Chapter 7 of Game Theory 101 Bargaining. Check the video description for more information on that. What I want to do here today is summarize the strategic dilemma an actor faces when he or she is uncertain of the other side's outside option. Broadly, when you're in this situation, you can choose one of two different strategies. You could try demanding more for yourself, and this has a virtue that whenever that offer is actually accepted, when you're demanding a lot for yourself and offering a small amount for the other side, then you're very happy with the deal when it's implemented because you're getting a lot for yourself. But there's also a virtue of demanding less. The less you demand, the more likely an offer is to be accepted. That's because you're going to be offering more, and so the other party is going to be getting more if it accepts, so it's more likely to accept. But of course, the downfall for you here is that you're demanding less in this situation, so you're not as satisfied with the offer being accepted as you would be if an offer was accepted and you had demanded more. So what this is telling us, what we call the risk-return trade-off is telling us, is that there is this unavoidable dilemma between trying to get a good deal and getting a deal done. You can't do both of these things simultaneously. The better a deal you try to get for yourself, the less likely you are actually to get that deal because the other side is going to reject your offer. And so when you're in the situation, when you're facing a risk-return trade-off, you have to balance between these two things. Balance between demanding more and trying to get a good deal for yourself, and demanding less and making sure that you get a good deal done. And we can actually find three different things that make you more likely to pursue safer offers. And when each of these things is false, of course, you're going to be more likely to pursue an aggressive demand and try to get more from the bargaining table and risk having rejection as a result of that. So when are you more likely to pursue a safer option? Well, when your cost of rejection is large, this incentivizes you to be safe. So if it's going to cost you a million dollars to go find someone else uh, to be a part of your agreement, that's going to be very costly for you, and so you're more likely to make a safer offer because you do not want to be stuck with the situation where you're paying a ton of money to go fix your bargaining problems somewhere else after the current deal is rejected. Second, and this is less obvious in that first bullet point, small increments that lead to great jumps in the probability of rejection make you want to play things safer. I'm going to be more explicit why that's the case in the next lecture. We're actually going to see another model, a similar model to what we've been exploring so far in this unit that will allow us to actually analyze this precise point. But for now, to summarize what's going on here in the risk-return trade-off is that if you have a very small incremental gain when you're trying to demand a small bit more for yourself, that's going to be good, of course, when the offer is accepted, but if trying to demand three extra cents for yourself makes it three times more likely that you're going to get your offer rejected, then it's probably not in your best interest to be trying to demand that three extra cents because you're getting this rejection so much more frequently as a result of that. And again, we'll see this in the next lecture when we actually analyze a model that allows us to make this claim. Lastly, and again, this is not as obvious as the first as well, is when opposing outside options are bad, you're more likely to make a safe offer. What's going on there is that if the other side's outside options are really awful, then any deal that you make, regardless of whether you're trying to tailor offers to weaker types or stronger types, that deal is going to be really, really good for yourself because you're going to be able to extract the surplus, and a large surplus at that, that the other party is trying to negotiate with you over, and the other side it just has this weak outside option, so they're not going to be getting much of the surplus anyway to start with. So at that point, you don't want to risk throwing away this entirely large surplus that you would be able to get if you just made a safe offer. So in that third case, when opposing outside options are bad, you're more likely to make a safe offer. Of course, again, when the opposite is true, when opposing outside options are really, really good, then this is going to incentivize you to act more aggressively because the value for you of making a deal isn't going to be particularly good. If the value of a deal for you is either going to be like one or two cents, then 
well, you know, the cost of you losing out on the deal isn't going to be that bad, and so you might as well be very aggressive, or at least in many cases, you might as well be aggressive. So that's the risk-return trade-off. This is something that we're going to be exploring more as we further this unit on uncertainty, and I'm going to be referring back to this idea of risk-return trade-offs later on. So I hope this is going to be ingrained in your brain, and I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.